Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning in the Metroverse. Hello, everyone, and good morning. I am Dr. Desiree Alexander. I am the founder and CEO of Educator Alexander Consulting. Woo -woo. And I am so happy to host this session about learning in to the metaverse. If you want the, I want to say graphic, that's not what I'm trying to say. If you want the resource for today, it's going to be underneath the video when this is on YouTube. It's going to be in the description. So definitely go and check that out. No, you don't get a certificate if you're only watching us on YouTube, but you do get the knowledge and you get the resource. What do we have coming up? December 2nd. So we're going to, this is the last one for November. So on December 2nd, we have voice, value, and validation, a paradigm shift. So how do we shift our paradigm in education to really focus on our kiddos? And then we have NFTS in education. That person looks so familiar. It's for sure. She's coming back to tell us about N NFTs in education. What do we need to know? Then we have January 20th, School Library, Optimizing Your Budget. Whether you have a budget or not, how can you optimize money? How can you get money for your library program? Then we have Up Your Google Game, Google Tips, Tricks, and Time Savers to boost your productivity, Saturday, January 27th. Then we have TCEA. What, what? This is the state conference in Texas, one of the biggest state conferences in the United States for technology. So I'll be teaching some sessions, all the times and locations, and all the good stuff will be at my website. And then we have asset-based teaching, changing perceptions to increase student achievement, February 10th. Then we have ELA Teachers 20 Best Technology Tools, February 13th and February 28th. But do know that these are paid events through BER, and I will be teaching them. Yeah. And then we have in-class flip. So not just flip, but in-class flip. Design active learning spaces for student-centered learning. Can't wait for these. Some of these are brand new sessions that haven't even been announced yet, y'all. So take a look. Teaching past the test, skills and tips for passing the Texas certification test. So if you're in Texas, this is one for you. Then we have AI for educators, a general AI session. Definitely read that description and see, is this something that I need to know? The current trends, the benefits, the drawbacks of AI. The keys to successful classroom management. So Dr. Marlin, who usually comes and tells us all about the SPED and everything you can possibly know about differentiation and inclusion, now is telling us about the keys to successful classroom management, March 9th. And then we always have our self-paced classes that you can always go in. They're paid, they're for test prep, Google test prep, level one and level two, SLLA test prep, all that good stuff. Then tell me what you want to learn or tell me what you want to teach. We get topics here. We get presenters here. So tell me what you want to learn in our EA webinar series and what you may want to teach. Do, 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 do. I'm all about let's getting started with our session today. I'm excited because you hear all these things, but you're like, I want to get like, what is the metaverse? What are we doing with it? How is it affecting education? I'm all about this session, and we're going to go ahead and get started now. Thank you, Dr. Desiree. As always, enjoy listening to you kick us off here. Um, thanks to everybody who's joining in now or later. Uh, if you want to connect with me, you can reach me on all the socials, the Twitter, the X, the Instagram, the threads, uh, rdenae915. Add a Gmail to that if you want to connect with me via email, or if you want to check out my blog site, which is listed there at the bottom. Um, I do take guest blogs. So if you have something that you've written and you want to share, please send it my way. I love sharing and learning uh, from other educators as well. So we are going to dive into learning in the metaverse. Uh, this, is, this is something that I have spoken about uh, at a bunch of different conferences over the last two years. And Still, when I experience it, it's still kind of mind blowing uh, what it is and what it involves. And then I recently, you know, started teaching about it in my class last year and showing students some different examples of it and talking about it. So 
Uh, while I am not an expert, I am somebody who loves to learn and explore these new ideas. So today, uh, in the time that we spend together, and we may not be here for the full hour and a half, just to let you know, because while there is a ton of information, uh, it, it'll give you a chance to maybe explore some things also. So we'll see how the time goes. But really quickly, my name is Rochelle Danae Poth. I love learning. I'm a full-time teacher, full-time consultant, also an attorney, and I uh, have written some different books, working on some books now, uh, some of which will involve information about all of the topics I'm going to cover here, because it's not just going to be about the metaverse. It's also going to be a little bit about AI, which is one of my favorite topics to talk about. Uh, probably the one that I've talked about for the, the most amount of years. I think it's almost six years now. A little bit about augmented virtual reality. And then, of course, the metaverse. All of those are interrelated and so if I can make it easier for educators to kind of dive in, to understand what the impact is, that's what I love doing. If I can save you time, that's that's what keeps me going uh, because, you know, I have always loved learning and I know that time is, uh, we just never have enough time to do all the things we want to do. So if I can do the work for you and get you started, then that's that makes me super happy. Uh, and it's also a lot of fun to just see where technology is taking us and how it's going to impact us as educators, but also, I mean, not just the work that we do, but the work that our, our students are going to be doing in the future. And who knows, the way that, that we are teaching, we might just be teaching in the metaverse. And so a couple of things that are important to understand are some basic definitions, because when... The metaverse, when you talk about the metaverse, uh, there are some other technologies that are, that are involved in it. Some things that we cover in my class, a big part of what I teach in my STEAM course is about AI. Uh, we spend about a third of the year actually talking about AI, looking at different tools, working with ChatGPT and other generative AI, and then we get into the augmented virtual reality. And so AI, hot topic, of course, and it has it's been interesting to see over the last six years, and then just more specifically this year, how much it has changed in, you know, in education. Uh, there has always been an interest, but the interest is so much higher now because of how quickly things are coming at us when it comes to the AI. Uh, so if you look at things, if I ask you, you know, real quickly in the, the chat, you know, what's the first thing you think of when somebody says artificial intelligence, you know, type in the word or just think to yourself, uh, you know, my students will say, when I say AI, they go artificial intelligence. I'm like, yes, but could you give an example? What comes to mind? Uh, some things over the last couple of years, like the number one answer has changed for many conferences that I've done. And I think, uh, it, I, I haven't totally counted, but I think I've done somewhere around 150 presentations on AI in varying forms, whether conferences, some with a uh, Dr. Desiree's webinar is here, but the most often response has been Alexa, uh, Terminator, iRobot, but in this year it has shifted mostly the number one answer is, you know, ChatGPT, generative AI, or some tool that's out there. So AI assistant help. Yeah. So the AI, you know, it can analyze, it can sort through information, it uses massive amounts of data, there's algorithms, there's a lot that's involved in it. It makes our lives easier in many ways where you may not even necessarily realize it. Uh, just simple things, you know, like Netflix, recommendations on Amazon. If you use Uber or any commuting, uh, you have smart home devices, banking and credit protection, you know, if there's fraud alerts and those types of things. And there's many, many more that are out there. But in education, whenever we can give students an assessment using one of those game-based learning tools. There's AI built into it that can chart a personalized learning path for them. It can sort through the information. iRobot was one of my favorites. I, I, I use that one all the time. And when I first started to research AI six years ago, I wrote a blog for Getting Smart. And I, I said, I thought of Terminator. I thought of the movie iRobot with Will Smith. And of course, you know, the Alexas. Uh, machine learning uses you know, it goes through and sorts through information. It can improve over time. It's a component of AI. So whenever we're using things like a translator, um, chatbot models, those types of things, that is based on machine learning. If you're using massive amounts of data sets or uh, if you do something like Google Quick Draw, if you've ever done that where you do the drawing and it's trying to guess or just thinking about 
if somebody holds up four objects and they say, which one of these is not like the other ones? Like you can figure out and analyze or you can see trends or patterns. So that's all involved in this. And then the neural network we talk about, it's like our brain, which has all of these billions of connections and it learns because it can sort through data to figure out what things are. So with my students, before we dive fully into the metaverse, we have covered AI, machine learning, and also tied within that because of the metaverse itself, understanding the different realities. And so, you know, breaking it down, and I'm just curious in the chat, if anybody teaches or you use something with AR or VR in just personal or professional lives, maybe you have, you know, a Quest headset or you use some different apps or anything, just out of curiosity, uh, but we look at definitions. You know, what are some examples I'm also thinking about the benefits. So along the lines, and I'm going to dive really deeply into this metaverse, what it is, where the term came from. So there will be a lot of information here because not a lot of people understand like that it's not something that's really entirely new and the concept of it is not entirely new as well. But augmented reality, you know, I could hold up a merge cube. I could still see the room around me. Uh, it's just that simulation of something in your real environment. And then virtual reality. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Hi, Emily. Thanks so much for everybody for joining in. The virtual reality, you know, it's that simulation. So it's more immersive. Uh, you have, may or may not have a headset. There are web-based VR tools that are out there because we know that sometimes wearing those headsets can cause motion sickness uh, or they're uncomfortable. You can't see, see the things very well if you're using a headset and somebody wears glasses, those types of things. But the benefits of using some of these are that it provides access to opportunities, experiences, environments that could be dangerous, uh, could be hard to reach, uh, might be financially impossible, or you know there are financial aspects of it. Like one example would be, in my language courses. You know, my students want to travel the world to, of Spanish speaking countries. And while I would love to take them on those trips, you know, the funding, the planning, all that goes into that. So if you can't actually be there, being able to use the VR to simulate that experience in training, using it, VR has been around for a long time. It's not something new. Uh, pilots are trained using VR. Uh, a friend of my parents, has this whole system that he built and you sit, you put the headset on and you can either be a race car driver or you can fly all of these different types of helicopters, planes, jets, you name it. I did not do very well. I was, I was great at the racing, but you actually, it simulated like even the movement of it. Uh, it was a little bit unsettling, a little bit overwhelming at times, but it was, it was really awesome. And so I figured out that I, I would not be a very good pilot probably. However, I did realize the benefits of having that technology to be able to practice, to learn how to respond to whatever you know is coming your way. Um, so that's VR. The mixed reality is when you have kind of the mixture. So hypothetically speaking, let's say you're in your classroom and you have these awesome glasses that you put on. They look like normal glasses. However, it has a technology that as you look into your classroom and you see your, your students, or if you're working with teachers, you see the people in the room. And because of the technology, you can still see the room, but through those glasses, you are able to see information about them. Uh, maybe it's data about the students. Maybe it's analyzing you know, their, their heart rate, if they're anxious. I mean, it can be, there, there's technology that's out there that's kind of, kind of scary. Hello. Uh, it's so nice to see friends joining in. Thank you so much. Um, but one thing that with the mixed reality also is that in certain fields like medical field, um, you know, airline industry, workforce, I mean, you name it, using glasses where you don't need all the extra equipment or the manuals and you can see what you're working on, but you have the information in front of you. Uh, I think back to the movie uh, with Tom Cruise, and I just blanked on the name of it. Uh, it will come back to me, but he, and even Terminator too, you know, like you see all of those, that information in front of you, but you can still see the real world around you. And it, it, my, thank you. Yes. I was like, I was like, I know it's an M. Thanks, Stormy. Minority Report. And that, that goes back years, right? So this technology or the concept of this technology is not something new. And so at the base of understanding, you know, what, the metaverse entails, it's 
all of these things. So now what it actually, let me go back. I'm going to hide that one in the chat. Do you already know, or have you experienced or joined in anything in the metaverse? You can put a Y or an N if you want. And sometimes, well, I don't want to do any spoilers because sometimes there are spoilers that come up in this as well. You got some yeses, some noes. I don't think so. That is a very good answer. And I'll, I'll share with you why shortly. And yes. All right. So going back to my other slide here. So the metaverse is actually a, a term that was coined. Look at that, that date, that year. So doing the math, it seems like it's something that's very, very new. However, it's actually not. It's from 1992. So if you do the math, you're talking last century, the 1900s, uh, thinking about the concept of the metaverse in this novel that was written by Neil Stevenson called Snow Crash. And I was at a conference, I believe it might have actually been TCEA, and there was a, a man in the session. Uh, it was only this, probably the third or fourth time I had done a presentation, and it was on the metaverse, NFTs, blockchain, uh, Web 3.0. It was a whole mix of things. Then I had an AI session, and he had actually, I mean, he had a copy of the book on his computer, and then he gave me a bunch of other information as well. But has anybody read the book or seen the movie Ready Player One by chance? Just out of curiosity in the chat, because that book was a very, when I read it, it was super nostalgic. Uh, oh, awesome. I, the movie, yeah, I read the book and it took me back to <laughs> like the 80s in the game room and putting the quarters on the games and waiting for your turn. And a uh, side fact about this is that that is a good analogy. If you have not been in the metaverse or you weren't really sure how to put it all together, so like I was mentioning, the augmented reality, the virtual reality, uh, didn't even get into blockchain. That's a whole other topic that we can talk about too. That'll come in, in in my December webinar as well when talking about NFTs. But it has all of these different components that we use. So you pull in the AR and the VR. You have the blockchain because you can do you know, transactions, you can store information on the blockchain, you factor in the social media that you might use and the interactions that you might have with people. And that's the space. So if you have seen the movie, or if you have read the book, Ready Player One, you get the idea of what the metaverse involves. And I will say, um, and, and if anybody doesn't know what the, uh, the blockchain is, it's basically like, if you imagine what in elementary school, like putting the paper together and making the links. It is a ledger that stores information that can be shared and it's just, it records transactions. Um, it tracks, you know, assets. Um, it's like a business network. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I can tell you about it. And they can be things like, you know, copyrights, branding. You can store information about, you know, virtually anything can be stored on the blockchain and it reduces the risk of, um, you know, like fraudulent transactions and so forth. But one student that I had in my STEAM course years ago, I remember throughout the whole year, I was like really trying to connect, you know, relationships are so important. And that's, that's part of the conversation about the metaverse as well, is those, that time together and to get to know people. But I remember thinking like, I cannot connect and, and it bothered me so much. And I just so happened to be walking past where they were working in class one day and I glanced down at the floor and on the floor, was a copy of the book, the Meta, um, Ready, Ready Player One. And I said, whose book is this? And this student said, oh, that's mine. And I went, oh my gosh, I loved that book. And the look that I got, he was like, you read this book? I said, oh yeah, that's a fantastic book. And I said, it was just like my childhood. And we just had a conversation. And from that moment on, there was a connection. I think, oh my, if I had not seen that book, and that was when he was in eighth grade and he just graduated school last year. And I tell him all the time, I said, every time I talk about these concepts in my STEAM course at a conference, I bring up, you know, the metaverse or the book Ready Player One. And so anyway, it, it's just, it was just a fun experience. Uh, so here's how you can compare it. So if you've been like right now, we're all in a Zoom meeting. If you've been in other meetings with teams or any of those spaces, we're, we're together. 
we could all put our cameras on, we could see each other, we can use the chat, we can hear each other's voices, but you don't feel like you're right next to somebody. So even though you're still in that same virtual space, it's not in such close proximity where you actually feel like somebody is talking directly into your ear. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good substitute if you can't be physically in person with people, but you don't have that same feeling like you do in some of these virtual meeting spaces that create that concept of the metaverse. And I have two examples there. Uh, one is Engage VR, one is Sina. There are many others out there. I'll share some with you here today. Uh, companies. So not just in education, you know, learning in the metaverse, it's companies can have virtual meetings, virtual spaces where you have some people physically in the office and you have other people who are not in the office that are joining in and they're represented basically by avatars. Uh, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony for a digital twin of a university, I believe, was it yesterday or the day before? And the people were actually physically at the school, but they had the online, and it's available on YouTube, uh, also where their avatars were moving, you could hear their voices, and you could hear them laughing, and they were moving and navigating through the online virtual space of their university, but they were physically in the school space. And so having a digital twin where I'm in my classroom, but I am also an avatar in the VR space on the web that's my digital twin. So, um, and it's not something that's new. Stanford actually did that uh, last June, I believe. And then last fall, they were launching, some different universities were launching metaversities throughout the world and they're continuing to grow. And so going on, so what is it? Uh, and some of these slides, I will tell you, I used some lovely generative AI to give me some really cool images for it. But it's basically a space that you can interact with other people. Uh, it's computer generated. It does pull in all of the realities. You have the avatars. You can move close to people. It has that spatial sound component. So the comparison, like right now, I'm at a conference. <laughs> I just I did a presentation this morning. It's a language educator conference here in uh, Pennsylvania. And everybody's in the room. I was presenting in the front of the room. Now. If people are talking in the room, I can hear them. I may not hear them very well, but I can still hear them and they can hear me at the front of the room. They don't have to move super close to me if I'm using the microphone, for example. In the metaverse, in these VR spaces, because of that spatial sound, you need to move closer to the speaker. So hypothetically, in the room that I'm in now, which is not this real hotel that's located in South America as my background, I can say, okay, Everybody in this room, I want you to break into groups and you're going to go to the four corners of the room. Regardless of where I stand or where the people are, they'll be able to hear each other. They might not exactly hear every part of the conversation or specific words, but you'll still have that noise level that may interfere and probably will interfere with your own conversation in that room, depending on the size of the room. However, when you are in the metaverse, you can say to the people, okay, I'm going to, I want you to go to four corners of this room, which is a virtual space, and the avatars move. You know, you're connected through similar to how we are in Zoom. And unless I, as the speaker, move my avatar over to where those groups are, I can't hear them. I might hear them very faintly, depending on where I'm standing, but you wouldn't necessarily hear them. And so uh, another comparison would be, you know, at a conference, you're sitting in the physical room and you decide that you want to take in three sessions in the same hour. Not a problem, right? You get up, you walk out, go to the next room, go to the next room. When conferences are held in the metaverse or classes in the metaverse, it's just you move your avatar and you are right through a portal into that next space. So it saves time. You know, you don't have to wait for the host to let you into the Zoom meeting and so forth. So that is kind of the start um, of you know what the metaverse is. So I'm going to give you some, and at any point you have questions, comments, experiences, uh, yeah, that is, you know, now I will share an awesome one that I did uh, take part in last year. So the statistics, um, and this is what I, what I think I, well, I alluded to this earlier when I asked you about the, you know, have you been in the metaverse? And there was an, I don't know. The research has shown that First of all, this is pretty interesting. 80% of the people that they surveyed 
And I don't know all the specific details about the survey. I have to go back to check it. But 80% found that it was a more inclusive place. And I think that's kind of a big deal. Um, I mean, that's a good thing. And it's also, I think it can be a negative thing, right? Because we want people to feel welcome in the spaces, whether it's in our classrooms, whether it's in the work environment, wherever. But the fact that 80% found it to be more inclusive than the real physical space, like we have to work on that. But the other part of it is that for some, and my students and I have conversations about this, is I say, you know, would you like, you know, to learn in the metaverse and why? And some of the students brought that point up. I never said a word about the inclusivity component. And a few of the students said, yeah, I would. And I said, why? And they said, I would feel like it would be more inclusive. And I was like, there it is. And I said, explain. They said, because being, you know, an eighth grader in a junior high school is tough. Not everybody is nice to you. Uh, you know, you don't feel welcome sometimes. And there were other reasons, but they said, in that metaverse space, you 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 can be somebody else. It's still you, but you're represented as an avatar. Um, there's no judgment. It's just, and they had additional reasons kind of along those lines. And it, it made me sad to hear that because we want our students to be welcome. Uh, but then they turned it around and they said, but I feel like that having that experience for some people would help them to gain confidence in interacting with others. So there are all these different angles that make it really interesting. So I love the conversation about it. Uh, you know, why join these spaces? Because it's a different way to connect with people and to interact. And I had, uh, th this was like really interesting. I had been invited to one of these metaverse experiences last December, I believe it was, that they held it. Uh, it was around December or January. And the person sent me the invitation and they were having this, you know, big party, big event. And they had different rooms set up. They had a DJ in one room and they had presentation in another. And then you walked in. I mean, it was a beautiful space. Uh, all the avatars moving around. And then they asked me what drink I wanted to choose. And I was like, I'm not sure about this drink thing. And they sent me a, a, like a list of drinks. And I thought that just in the metaverse, I was going to have this prop of a drink. So I picked one random drink. I don't even remember what it was. And then uh, probably two weeks after that, I, re I received a package in the mail and I'm like, what is this? And I opened it up. It was the drink. It was the, it was the ingredients to actually make the drink to join in the event. Uh, it was, so it was real. It wasn't something just in the metaverse. So, uh, it was a fun experience to kind of move through and interact in that space. The other statistic, and this is the with the I don't know, is that 63% had no idea they had been in the metaverse all this time. So that's kind of curious as well. Uh, some other statistics I can share with you. They, the people that they surveyed, 85% said they liked that they can change their appearance. And I mean, that can be fun, right? You can dress up and, and make your own avatar. And we've all done that in different ways. If you make a Bitmoji or something and you change it, you know, a Snapchat filter, you put on like all the possibilities or using some of those AI generators that create, you know, take your image and then create you and all of these different styles. Those are fun to do. But the other piece is, you know, if it's younger students, like high school level, uh, you know, are they changing it? Like, why are they changing it? Do they feel that they don't belong? Do they feel that there's something wrong with their appearance? And this, again, is conversations that I have. And I think if you are thinking about teaching about metaverse, you know, there's so much to learn. There's always, I, one thing I would recommend is I have my Google, my Gmail set to do alerts for news, all these topics. I wonder why I get so many emails every day. It's because I have all these topics, one of which is metaverse, metaverse and higher education and metaverse in high school. I mean, you can put whatever you want and it'll pull in, depending on the frequency that you choose, news stories from all around the world. And you kind of scroll through and see the titles and the topics, but I'm always curious about what people are saying about it and bringing that into my classroom. And so my students also loved getting into this conversation and said, yeah, well, you know, if I want to just dress up a certain way or have a certain hairstyle and just be somebody different for a little bit, like, I can do that. Um, the 79% saying their friends are more accepting, that ties back to what I said a little bit earlier is, and, and that's 
that's also kind of sad too, right? Like we want, like I said, we want people to feel welcome and to have an inclusive space for our students. But in this space, they, you know, the appearance, it's an avatar. It's whatever they create to represent themselves in that space. I mean, we can still hear their voice. Uh, some of them that are, some of the things that are out there can actually mirror, use the AI and kind of mirror your face and actually put your face on, which I'll show you one that's really interesting. Uh, but I don't know. So there definitely are benefits and there are some drawbacks to it. Uh, but I think that the learning that comes from this is it helps us in our real classroom spaces to think about the activities, the learning opportunities, the interactions that we're seeing in our classrooms with our students and helping them to work on building those skills, to be more accepting, to you know welcome their classmates, to learn about each other as well. And then the other component is this prediction that, you know, a quarter of all the consumers are going to spend at least an hour engaging in the, with the metaverse by 2026. So maybe you're already doing that. Maybe you're spending more than an hour already. Uh, there was a woman who spent 24 hours with a headset, except she took it off like two times, I think once to wash her face. And there was one other time she took it off maybe to, to brush her teeth or something, but she literally had the headset on for 24 hours. And there was a video on it and she just said it was, it was neat, but it was super overwhelming and uncomfortable. And just to be in that space for that long, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I don't know that I could, I could handle that. So here's a question. Has anybody ever used, and it goes back years, second life? And that go, that is probably, I, I used that in 2014 for a meeting with ISTE's uh, had the Games and Sims Network, one of their professional learning networks. And I was very, very confused about what was going on. They said, we're meeting in Second Life. I said, I, I don't know what that means. And it's basically like how we are joining in now, except there's a, you know, there's a scene. It's Maybe it's an office. Maybe it's some cool island or it's an outdoor setting. And you have your avatar and everybody just moves the avatar using the arrow keys and you go and you stand or you sit and you're listening to the person speaking, but it's a virtual space. Uh, so you move the avatar around. And then some platforms like our students that are using things like Fortnite and Roblox, like that is the concept of the metaverse in those spaces. But you can do all of these different things. You can buy things in the metaverse. You can actually own land. Uh, Snoop Dogg owns, I, I don't know if he still owns the his house in the metaverse or not, but somebody paid, I think, like a half a million dollars to buy the plot of land next to Snoop's land in the metaverse. And I'm I'm not sure. I mean, just the concept of it, like, that's a lot of money to pay to buy, like, you know, a, a space that's, I don't know, like, are you getting invited to the parties? <laughs> like, Snoop, but I guess he, there was a, an article about it that said, like, Snoop throws the best parties in the metaverse. And he, you can, because people join in if you're invited, and you can hear the sound, and you can have the avatar and interact and so forth. Um, and I do believe that, and I forget who it is now, if it was Snoop Dogg and Eminem, but they did a video in the metaverse. And that was earlier this year too. So lots of, lots of really cool things and information. So just giving you some of the information, uh, the metaverse. So you would, it would have its own economy. So now like there's all of these things that come up like financial literacy and knowing how to, you know, carry out transactions. I mean, even where I am here today and, and so often anymore, it's, it's, you know, cashless, like they will not take cash. You have to have something. You have to have Apple Pay. You have to have a credit card. Uh, in some places, like in China, they scan your face and you have paid for something. It is very interesting to me. Oh, that's nice new doggy land. But just imagine, I mean, go back and think of how just purchasing things, the look of it has changed over time. I mean, I have the money, got the credit cards, the old, use the, do the, swipe if anybody remembers that they made the imprint on the film with a credit card uh then you actually had to insert the credit card sometimes now i'm so confused about how to even i'm like do i insert do i swipe do i hover it do i tap it like i'm not sure what to do but it adds on so much extra in terms of what we have to understand about it so financial literacy is huge uh, next year is 2024 
$800 billion market for the metaverse. Uh, and again, that comes from companies that are putting together, you know, metaverse for work, which investing in it, but it can also save money because if you can have people work for your company, in your company that are not physically located in that space, you're saving some money because you can, and you're bringing people in from all around the world that otherwise may not be able to come in and work with you. So there's that other aspect of it as well. And so let me go back. There we go. Um, there was a podcast and I have some of these things linked in the document. I'm going to add some additional things in there. And there are some extras that I won't cover in our time here to the, today, but just informational. But there was a podcast and it talked about uh, how it is going to you know, increase an opportunity for equity and access and learning. And the meaning behind that is that you know, with some schools, depending on where you're located, you know, some students might have to travel an hour or two hours to school, or they have to live at, and we're talking like a high school uh, because of the distance and there's a lack of resources, or perhaps the funding to get to going to college, for example, might be really high, but being able to learn in the metaverse, you're reducing the price because you're not paying for, you know, housing, for example, travel costs, for example, uh, or maybe there's just the, the question of time. And so making it more accessible through some of these metaversities that are being created. And like I said, last June, uh, it was Stanford and they had a class that was offered in VR and the kids that were involved, the students used Engage VR, which is one of the platforms. And they took courses and look at the, the number of hours they spent learning together in the metaverse. Now, do you have to use the headset no, because there's web-based. Uh, but if you really want to feel like, you know, like Melissa is like right there talking right next to me. I know the first time I used my Quest, uh, the first Quest that I had, the Oculus, actually the Oculus Go, and joined in. It was me, Jamie Donnelly, uh, David Lockett, and uh, Brian Costello from four different areas of the United States. And we're all together in this space playing a game of like go fish in a decorated living room. And I really felt like I was looking at them and I could hear them like as though they were in the space where I was in, which clearly they weren't. Uh, also, you know, joining in and watching like a game or something together. There's all of these different things that you could do. And being in that headset for a long period of time, uh, it's, it's tough, but this web base, it's not so much like that. Um, the metaversities, like I said, excuse me, and that was last fall, there were 10 metaversities that were launched and that was around the world. And there are more now, like I mentioned the other day, you know, having a digital twin and the one is kind of neat, right? So you are physically in the classroom with your students, but you are projected as an avatar in the metaverse space. And so if you're thinking, you know, like it says here on the screen, I put on there like the, the size of classes. So at the university level, I remember having a psychology course that, had like 850 students in it, I think, and it was held in a huge auditorium. Uh, being able to hear the teacher, you know, being able to access the teacher in that case was difficult. Uh, so if you have the ability that you're, you're physically in a classroom and it's a smaller class size, but you can have other people join in from all around the world who otherwise may not be able to access that course or an education, then that that's important. Or, you know, budgetary concerns, um, access to materials also is another issue. So concerns. Uh, there are a lot of concerns I have on here, but are there anything, you know, feel free to put in the chat if there are anything as I've been talking, because I've been talking a lot, and I'm going to show you what like some of the layers of the metaverse look like. But the concerns, you know, one of which I, I said earlier is that interpersonal, like being in that same space. And we all know through the times where we couldn't you know, travel, there weren't any in-person conferences, not being able to be with people in person is a kind of a, you know, it's a big deal. And then being able to get back together with people in person is awesome. So it does limit our interactions. Uh, but like I said before, they're, they're saying that some people feel it's more inclusive. So does that, you know, how does that impact us? Maybe people learn to build those interpersonal skills because they're interacting 
in these virtual spaces. Um, they feel maybe that they can speak up more, whereas in a physical classroom, they would not feel like speaking. So you can go back and forth with those, you know, long-term health effects. If you have that headset on for a long period of time, like what's the impact of that? I mean, there has to be something, right? <laughs> Especially if you're wearing it all of the time. Um, the world of work, there's some problems, you know, you have to think about um, privacy, for example, is an issue. You know, what does work even look like if you are like sitting in traffic and you're like, oh, I have to drive an hour to work and sit through traffic, but my coworker just gets to sit at home and just join in and has that extra hour or actually two hours between the commute in their day. You know, what does work look like? Uh, in the metaverse, there you have different office spaces that you can move through your avatar and go into a different meeting room. And again, just thinking and wrapping your head around it is like, wow, that's kind of interesting how that happens. You know, privacy of information, using some of these tools, like is our information being shared? You know, that is a big concern, even with like AI that people are talking about with ChatGPT and all those other tools that are out there. And with any technology that we use, it's something we have to consider. And then what about crimes that happen in the metaverse? Um, they're, they are starting to look at some different interactions. And when I say crimes, I mean, you know, if if there are like bullying in the metaverse, cyberbullying in the metaverse, um, other things that you can think of that would happen maybe in person, uh, that could happen outside, maybe somebody threatens somebody, like those types of issues. Like this is something new. And I am an attorney and people have asked me about it. I'm like, it's new, just like with AI and ChatGPT and all of these things, like so many things are coming at us, especially with technology, emerging technology, that it's conversations and it's going to continue to evolve. And, and it will be interesting to see how it does change over the next couple of years. So this image I got from Getting Smart, which is where I had written a couple of blogs about the metaverse and one event that I'll share with you. Uh, but these are the different layers of it. And so not gonna dive deeply into you know all of this, but you can see like you have that base infra infrastructure that sets it all up. So what's the program? How is it functioning? And then you, the next layer is like, do I have to wear a headset? Um, how am I interacting in this space? You know, what power do I need? Then you have all the artificial intelligence. And then you got, if you're buying things, if you are learning in the metaverse, they can use NFTs to give you your credentials. Uh, maybe you're selling things in metaverse. Now you're looking at cryptocurrency, the learning component of it. So you have like the gaming, the game-based learning aspects. There are, it's, it's a very in-depth concept, but yet when you are in the metaverse experience, it does, you don't notice all of that. You're just kind of functioning similar to like how I said with AI, like when it's doing what it's been programmed to do, like it's just doing it. You don't, you don't see all of the parts of it. So I've kind of gone through what it is, some examples of it, uh, some concerns, which I think with anything, we always want to focus on like the good, the bad, you know, what are some of the ethical considerations we have to think about? But then in education, you know, what is the potential? And again, I use lovely generative AI to help me come up with a very cool picture to tie into metaverse. And so that's exactly what it did. So what are the benefits? Well, just like we're sitting here now from all of our different locations, uh, we are joining in and we can collaborate. If students are working with teachers, we use breakout rooms, for example, in a Zoom meeting or in, in Google, whatever our meeting option or platform is. Uh, but in this space, you can, like I said, go into the metaverse and move to one side of the room. The teacher can move around the room and interact one-on-one -on -one with each student, which we can do in our physical classroom. But the difference is, if I'm in my physical classroom and I walk up to each student and I say, okay, look, uh, here's your assessment. This is what you miss. This is what you need to work on. This was your grade. I mean, I am very discreet when I do this, but the kids, you know, they're like, I got this grade. Uh, but in the metaverse, when you do that, because of the way the sound works, if I am standing my avatar next to the student, unless there's some other student standing right there, like they can't hear that. So you can give them some personalized learning. 
Um, you can connect with people from all around the world, which we can do through Zoom, through webinars. Uh, you can have virtual field trips because you can travel to different places. You can have simulations and the student engagement because it's just something that's different. So that's one thing to think about. Uh, the flexibility and the accessibility. So let's say you have students that, you know, some students may not want to leave home to go to school. Some, it might be uh, limiting because of funding. I have some students who say, oh, I want to go to college, you know, in Europe or something. And like the cost of that, I don't even know how, the process of what you would have to go through to go to. I've had students do it, so I need to ask them. But the ability to be able to join in a university, a metaversity, or even just a class that somebody sets up in the metaverse. And otherwise, a student or an adult like us who are here learning on a Saturday can join in. And going back to that, you know, you feel safe in that space because you're in your home or wherever you're choosing to join in to this experience. And you also, like statistics have shown, it feels more inclusive because you're just represented by an avatar. People don't necessarily know what you actually look like good or bad, you know, there's benefits and drawbacks to that, of course. But the other piece is it can help with collaboration. Uh, in the physical classroom, kids can go and work together in different parts of the room. They can do that in this space as well. And if we find ourselves in, you know, virtual learning, hybrid learning, this is an alternative way to learn. And my students and I have done this and they were like, this is unbelievable. Uh, other things, here we are with some professional development. So like you are right now, we're all joined in via Zoom, but I could create a space for us to engage in learning in the metaverse. And I did join in a conference last year held in the metaverse. And it was unbelievable. I am going to share that with you in some screenshots I took. I actually wrote an article about it as well, because there is an organization, the Ed3DAO, uh, and Riti, it's V-R-I-T-I, uh, and Mike, and uh, there's a couple of them that run it, but just the knowledge base and what they're doing is unbelievable. What they did for that conference was unbelievable. But, you know, there might be opportunities that you say, oh, I wish I could join in, but that's being held, you know, around the world. And I have to try out the fly on a plane for like 16 hours just to get there. Whereas Metaverse, if it's held in that space, which again, held with Zoom, but in the Metaverse, you feel like you're actually physically in that space and you feel like you're standing next to the people instead of sitting in all of our, you know, separate locations. So that is one of the neat benefits of it. And I'm going to skip this one. Uh, higher education. So like I mentioned the other day, there was a ribbon cutting because they had the digital twin. So when you're in the metaverse, if you're in the headset, you know, the virtual labs and online courses, but it's kind of interesting because even in the ribbon cutting the other day, you know, you have to know how to interact in that space because even with VR, if you have the headset on, you know, you might have, you have the controllers and you have to figure out how to like pick things up. If you're doing like a science lab, for example, uh, the other day they're trying to get to grab the scissors to cut the virtual ribbon. And you could see the avatar kept moving the hand. And then somebody said, you have to grab the purple dot. <laughs> and then, oh, okay, grab the purple dot. And then pick the scissors up, walked over and the scissors were open, just cut the ribbon, but they actually physically cut the ribbon at the university. But the digital twin was doing the same ribbon cutting ceremony. So it's kind of like, I don't know, this is really interesting how this works. And then you know, what does it look like for the future? Well, who knows? Uh, they say that it's it's promising. And I again, I get articles all the time. There are more and more things coming out, especially like just I said two days ago, you know, the digital twin. Uh, lots of people are doing research on this, especially for higher education. I don't know about, you know, our level, but I mean, elementary education, you know, balance of technology, getting students. We want our students to build their skills. So Ideally, they're in the same physical classroom, but they need to understand what these concepts are. You know, what is augmented reality, virtual reality, um, artificial intelligence? How do you have a transaction using, you know, whatever? And what is the blockchain? Like, there's all of these terms that who knows five or 10 years from now what it's going to look like. Like I said, we're already seeing like, cash. We don't want your cash. I'm like, what do I do with my cash? You got to have the credit cards or the Apple pay or Venmo and cash app, all of these things, you know, 
what's it going to look like in 10 years for students? Will students have an option to attend real school or to attend a school that is open in the metaverse? I, I don't know. But we have to embrace what these changes are and do our best to understand them because they may very likely say to us at some point in our schools, hey, so, uh, you know, we're looking at the schedule for next year and uh, you're going to teach in the metaverse instead of room, whatever room this is. And you're like, hmm, okay, that's going to be interesting. What does that, what's that, what does that look like? And it's kind of like when schools close, you had to think, how do I teach? Like I had to think, how do I teach this? You know, I've used technology and I, but I've never taught a Spanish class fully online. I almost didn't know what to do. Right. Uh, and Stormer would love to hear that. I mean, it, it would be cool, right? You would have to just say, all right, we're going to go with this and see how it, uh, how it turns out. Uh, I do, I, I would miss being with the students and having those interactions. And so if that were to happen, hopefully it wouldn't be like a full replacement for it. I mean, maybe like ease into it, like one or two classes in the metaverse, or I'm fine with having a digital twin and being an avatar in a classroom. That would work for me as well. But, you know, for students, who knows, their job may be remote. So many careers are still fully working remotely and using Zoom, but this would actually provide more interaction. Coming up soon, you're going to be, going to be kind of wild here. One more informational, uh, you would have to really think about like, how do I integrate my curriculum? What type of tools am I going to use? And are there other people that I can collaborate with? Because you can't just necessarily just dive into it, right? You have to focus on like, how am I going to do this? Or why am I going to use a specific tool or technology in my classroom? And so I'm going to show you a couple examples here uh, coming up. And I just want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a pause for a minute. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on what you see. If anybody is like anything at all, or if you notice anything. And then I'll give you some explanation for this and what you're seeing. It, it is like a Sims game. Yes. And this is similar to what it looked like um, in Second Life before. Now, this one is Spatial XR. And the amazing Jamie Donnelly, who is one of my best friends, and she's just phenomenal with all things AR, VR, XR, every type of reality, uh, used to do a chat on Wednesday nights. And it was a 30-minute chat. She always had a new tool, new experience, you know, get you involved. And, and that's what I loved about it is that it wasn't just the, the typing in the chat. It was like, okay, you need to create something. So she had <laughs> created this room. And if you look on the top right, it's kind of hard to see, but there are, she has pictures hung on the wall and there's a, there are, were pictures all around the wall. And then what this one did was it created a 3D avatar, although none of us have legs in this, which was a little awkward, but it used your webcam. If you turn the webcam on and it mirrored because it could analyze your face, it mirrored your interactions. So depending on what you did with your facial expressions, it would do that with your avatar. So you can see me there. Uh, some of my other friends are in here. You know, Jamie is kind of in the back. You can't really see her, but you can see her name, but you didn't have to have the webcam. I mean, you didn't have to have a headset. You could have the webcam on. And I chose to just not have my webcam on. I just use, I upload a profile picture and let it just generate. But then eventually I did put the webcam on, but you could walk, you could move around the room. So looking at this picture, because on the bottom left, the four of us are kind of standing close together. We would be able to hear each other talk. But Jamie, who was further across the room and anybody else far across the room would not be able to hear our conversation. So you would have to move in. Now, the neat thing about this is if you're comparing with Zoom, right now I'm sharing my screen and you can see it on your screen. Uh, depending on how your layout is, you might be able to see people's faces, if their cameras are on or just their names. But in this, I could actually upload some different things. I could put, like I showed you the pictures on the wall, you can screen share and it kind of projects it in the front of the room, but people would need to move closer to where you are speaking from to be able to hear you. And in doing that, you would feel closer than you are in like a physical classroom or if it's a conference space, for example. So I remember when we experienced this with her, we were like, 
okay, this is kind of awkward. Like, look at the faces, like, because they were, they were so real because it was, you know, creating from your actual selfie. So that is one of many of the tools that are out there for creating these web-based VR, but actually XR or the metaverse experiences. So let me tell you about this conference from last year. Uh, it was held in November. And I was lucky to join in because Getting Smart was one of the uh, one of the sponsors, I think it was. And I was so curious about this. And there's Vridi on the top there. I was like, I want to join in this conference and write an article about it. So what you're looking at is they built their system. And in that space, you have, if you look, there's like one, two, three, four, five, a little small like areas where, where avatars could go and sit. On the right side, you see the Zoom. So people in their home spaces, the camera's on, and then their little symbol there was what their avatar was in this space. You could have the conversation. So you could see on the bottom there, I typed in you know, a thank you. And then on the left, you can see all of these different people. My friend Tisha from Wakelet was there. And so because all of those avatars are standing near each other, whoever is actually speaking, in that case, it was Vridi, we could hear her. Now, if I decided to walk over to the exit, I wouldn't be able to hear them anymore because my avatar had moved away from where the sound point was. The other thing that was kind of unsettling about this at first was that as you enter the different rooms, if you pass by somebody's avatar, I mean, normally you would think like, they don't see you, nothing's going on, they're just passing. But I would hear people say, oh, hey, Rochelle. And I'm like, Okay, and then you could turn your, your camera on, your Zoom, and actually see each other face to face like they're on the screen here. Or you could just leave that off and it's your avatar. But if you were standing next to one person, nobody else that was spread throughout the room could actually hear you. Uh, they had a full schedule set up. They even did some different, people had sessions, presentations, so they could share their screen. Uh, you could go take your, your choice in different rooms, but you didn't actually have to physically get up, pack up your stuff and go to another room you just kind of moved around in the different room space. And so when I uh, joined in, I was like, I don't really know about this, but it was like, awesome. Um, and here's another image. This is, was like the closing. So the Ed3 DAO, uh, and I have to fix that, it, oh, Mike and, uh, and Brady. So they founded it. And the end of it, if you look, there are all the people across the top and Dagan is another one of them, who basically created this full conference that was held in the metaverse, in this you know web experience. They also have a channel, uh, if you're on Discord, you can join in the conversations about this. But all of these different spaces that you see, they could have said, like the people, this is them up on the stage, the avatars that you see at the top. And so each one of them could take turns, even though their cameras were on, you could see them speaking, but had the cameras not been on, unless you were close to the front, you wouldn't hear them. So they could say, okay, now everybody break into groups and all of these little avatars could spread all around the room and go have their own little conversations and then pull it all back together. Yeah, Discord, uh, there's a lot. I, I, been, I use it. There's some different communities on there and it's it's another one of those things, right? There are so many different ways to, to communicate and connect with people. But if you're interested in learning about more about this, um, this is definitely something that you would want to check out that Ed3. And uh, Mike is, Mike Peck is always putting out great information and Dagan is on LinkedIn and Vridi also. They're all on LinkedIn. They put out newsletters and articles all the time. Um, just some other images. So if you imagine you're at a conference, like I'm here at a conference and here are say the six conference rooms. And now if you've been to larger conferences, you know that it's, it's not easy to get to that next session because sometimes you have to walk really, really far. And so you have to get up and take all the steps to get there. But in this case, here I am. And as I was walking by this person, if they were watching on the screen, they could see me and they go, oh, hey, Rochelle. And we could have a conversation. We could turn the cameras on and interact. And so that piece, that inclusivity, you know, I'm just represented by an avatar. But then if you want to build those connections and actually see, you know, you are a real person turning the camera on. But if I move further away, we wouldn't be able to have a conversation because our avatars are too far apart. But let's say 
you know, learning lab, each of these learning labs had sessions going on just like at a conference. And so if you walk into um, session, well, learning lab one, and as you move in, you have to move closer to where the speaker is and you stay and you listen for a while and you're like, mm, I think I want to try this other session. So in the real world, you have to get up, pack up, walk to wherever it is. You know, people notice you leaving. You, that could be awkward, especially if you're up front. You know, you always pick your you're strategic about where you sit if you think you might be leaving a session or if you want to take all the things in, like many of us do, you know, law of two feet, they say. But in the metaverse, you walk in your avatar, you use the arrows, push the avatar in, and then you go back out. And you go to this door and you go through the portal, you go back out. So it's instantaneous. There is not the wait for the host to let you into the Zoom meeting or anything like that. And so you kind of just move around. They also had... Um, companies. So just like an exhibit hall with exhibitors where the companies have their booths, they had that set up. And so like Flip, if anybody knows Anne from Flip or um, Jess or Jornay, they all, a couple of them were in there. So you could like walk over, take your avatar and sit and learn just like you would at a physical conference, but you're in the metaverse. So thinking about you know, the savings. I mean, we want to be in person because that's important, but sometimes if you have this option, being able to do that and still have that experience, whether it's a conference or if it's learning in a metaverse or taking a class, that's pretty cool too. And then just the design and the layout of it, um, you know, the bottom right picture, just very cool background. Lots of these tools that are out there for this, you can design libraries, makerspaces, offices, art galleries, museums, you name it. You can put pictures on the wall and direct students. I've done some where, you know, I've been like the student in the classroom and then you have to do a presentation. I presented a session in the metaverse, basically, uh, for ISTE two years ago. And Jamie Donnelly was with me. And instead of Jamie helping me, she... Uh, was using the marker to draw a mustache on my face. My avatar was a cat, which people who know me will come as no surprise. Jamie was Santa Claus, but the people couldn't actually hear me. Uh, they had to come closer and I could hear them as they got closer. And then my presentation was projected onto the screen in, uh, we were using Mozilla Hubs at the time actually, but you know, there's different ones out there, like I said, so that's just a glimpse of what it was. It was a really amazing experience. And so there are lots of different benefits to it. I know we could, I could keep talking about all of these things for a long period of time. And I've already been talking for an hour. It's already almost 10 after one here. But if you have questions, and I'm going to skip here to the next one, um, there are some links and there are some different articles that came out about the metaverse. And I, I will make sure that these are in my document. And I had them hyperlinked here, but I'll double check. But these are not anything new. There was actually a video that Walmart, I think, had put out about shopping in the metaverse. And it was kind of interesting. And it was, uh, there was a voice telling you, like the person was trying to reach, the avatar was trying to reach for a bottle of, of something. And it's like, oh, remember, you have a bottle of that in your refrigerator at home. And I was like very confused because I'm like, if the person is at home and their avatar is doing the shopping, it's just interesting. Uh, there was the other article talking about like the disabilities. So again, for people who may not be able to travel, um, whatever the, the, the reason may be, you know, we're looking at giving them the opportunity to access whatever the learning experience is or whatever the experience is. It could be work, it could be education, uh, the human efficiency, you know, traveling to work for some people, commutes. You know, I, I don't have a long commute, but I do know some people, educators and people that work in different careers that they drive two hours each way each day to work. And if this were an option where, you know, three days they're physically in the office and then the other two days they're working in the metaverse or, I mean, it's virtual work, but if they're actually engaging in meetings in the metaverse, um, is that beneficial? How does that help? Well, it saves time. It saves money. Maybe people are more efficient. You know, that's what the articles and the research was showing. And so that's a lot of information. And, you know, if you have if you were not sure if you experienced it, maybe now you realize, oh yeah, I actually did join in that. Uh, we're not really in the metaverse right now. We're just in a Zoom meeting, but we could create it and join and have the avatars. Uh, if you're looking for one to try, you know, there is uh, 
I just blanked on it. Mega Minds is one that actually has different tours and things that are available that you can kind of get students to work through. Uh, Mozilla Hubs, you can create the different spaces. You know, Second Life has been around. That was years ago. That one was around. Cena VR, uh, the Engage VR, there, there is a never-ending list of some of these tools that are out there. And they are go going to continue to be available because it's the interest is growing. Uh, people, you know, with that that digital twin and just seeing, you know, they're not just diving into it without testing it out first, uh, because there is a big financial investment in creating it and all of the infrastructure that was shown, like on those seven layers, of the metaverse. But there's a lot to it. I think, I think it's interesting. It it will definitely be something to see what happens with it over the next couple of years. You know, with more metaversities. And if people choose to work in the metaverse, if office, if companies decide to create the metaverse experience for, for people to work in, uh, so they have you know access to, to different people from different places around the world, uh, we'll see what happens. But that is, you know, pretty much as much as I could tell you, I could tell you more about the metaverse. I could go into the web 3.0 and dive into the blockchain and all of those other topics. But I think the biggest piece is understanding what some of the components are because you are in a different reality. It's not the real world learning experience. Uh, does it, you know, in your mind, as you think through some of these things that I've talked about, does it seem like it would be more inclusive, less inclusive? Uh, does it feel like, you know, there are definitely benefits to it? I know you said you would love to hear that you're teaching in the metaverse the next year. Who knows? I, I just think that it's awesome that there are a lot of different types of technology that are continuing to evolve. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, AI is like my favorite topic to talk about, probably seconded by AR, VR. Um, ironically, I did a session this morning on SEL and just different ideas for getting students to, you know, prepare them for whatever in the future. And I did a little bit about augmented virtual reality in that and uh, did mention a tiny bit about AI, but it's always fun to share ideas and to keep learning. So again, not the expert, but somebody who had, who definitely spends a lot of time learning about and reading about some of these topics and teaching about it. So with my eighth graders, we've, like I said, been working on, uh, we work on a lot of different topics. We've been working on AI, but our next big topic is the AR, the VR, and the metaverse. And so after I go through that with them, I'm sure I will have extra information to share. And so if you keep that document handy, because I don't share the slides, because there's there's a gazillion slides in this, but it's easy for me to remember both meta, and I can add more information to it also as I find it. And you know, again, you know, connect with me on Twitter, X, anything like that. Send me an email. Uh, I'm always happy to share ideas with you, and I definitely want to learn from you. So if you dive into an experience in the metaverse, let me know how it goes, uh, or if there are things that you think of and, and questions, concerns that come up that I didn't mention, please share those with me as well, because I, I would love to learn from you. So as always, thank you for joining in, and Dr. Desiree, thank you for all of these great learning opportunities for educators, because it's phenomenal seeing that whole long list of what's coming up and that you make this available on a Saturday when teachers, like, what are we doing? But it's nice that we can learn from wherever we are and the recording is available. So thank you again to you and to everybody that has joined in. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love learning all the background of Metaverse and kind of where it came from. And, you know, a lot of us know Second Life and all these things that came out ahead and we just don't think about it as, right. you know, Metaverse pretty much. So um, thank you so much. I've done a couple of conferences where they've done social hours in the metaverse mm -hmm. and you like visit different yeah. tables and talk to people and it's kind of weird at first. <laughs> You're like, what is happening? And then you kind of get into it. Um, right. So thank you so much for taking that and talking about the educational side of it. Yeah. As always, you are part of the EA family and we love you and appreciate you, Rochelle. Love you right back and appreciate you and all that you do. And I'm thankful to see people join in. So thank you for joining on Saturday or whenever, if you're watching the recording. <laughs> Thanks, Stormy. Thanks, everybody.